In this edition of DaVinci Resolve Guy Tries, we're going to be diving into Vegas Pro 18. Let's take a look. This might be the most excited I've been about trying a new NLE since I switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, and there are a couple reasons for that. First, while most of the software I've tried in this series has been geared towards beginners or for people who just don't want to deal with the technical level of more professional NLEs, Vegas Pro is actually more of a professional level video editing program. Also, like me, the creators of Vegas Pro got their start in audio. In fact, the very first edition of Vegas Pro wasn't an NLE at all, it was a full-fledged DAW, and when they eventually turned it into an NLE, they kept a lot of the DAW-like features and even figured out how to make them work for video. By the way, this is not a sponsored video. I did get a copy of Vegas Pro 18 for free, but Magix isn't paying for this review, and they don't get to see the video before I publish it. Recently, Magix released Vegas Pro 18, and from what I've read and heard, they've added a lot more tools to their software to make it even more of a complete package. In fact, before we dive into Vegas, let's take a look at some of those new features. First, and probably most notably, is the introduction of AI-powered effects, specifically colorization and style transfer. Colorization can bring color to old black and white footage, and style transfer will actually make your footage look like it was created by some of history's best artists. Now, these aren't necessarily tools that I would use in my own videos, but it does mark an exciting new direction for Vegas Pro, and I'm interested to see where they take their deep learning capabilities in the future. Vegas Pro 18 also improves on their color grading capabilities. You can now move the color grading module anywhere on your screen, more on that later, and there are improvements to its already industry-leading HDR support. So maybe if you're having trouble with the HDR footage on some of the newer LG phones, Vegas Pro 18 might be the way to go. A couple other new features include an integration with SoundForge Pro 14, which will allow allow for a seamless round trip to and from SoundForge for audio post-production, and more advanced motion tracking options. There are also a lot of new tools for fixing problem footage like noise reduction, deflicker, and black bar fill for when you're dealing with footage that was shot vertically instead of horizontally. Finally, Vegas Pro 18 also introduces improved hardware optimization, the ability to search for and favorite effects, and a bunch of other tools to improve your workflow like incremental project saving, which will save a new version of your project so you can easily get back to a specific edit point. Now, since this is more of a professional level NLE, it goes without saying that there are a lot more tools and features to go through than in some of the other programs I've reviewed in this series. And because of that, we're gonna do this video a little bit differently. Instead of having you watch me as I try to figure out what I'm doing, which which I have no doubt would take multiple days, by the way. I've actually spent the last few days diving into Vegas Pro, learning the tools, recutting some old videos, and documenting my experience. Here's what I've found. The first thing I noticed when I opened up Vegas Pro 18 for the first time was just how fast it loaded. In fact, it loaded up faster than both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, which was super cool. Now, when you first open up Vegas, two things happen. First, rather than opening up to some kind of start screen or project manager, Vegas actually opens up right to the editing interface so you can get started right away and then save your project when you're ready. You also get a little pop-up screen that informs you of the next live Vegas Pro training session and invites you to join. As a new user, I thought this was a nice touch, and considering that even seasoned users will be facing new tools that they've never used before, this is something that will always be helpful. The UI when you first load Vegas is fairly simple with just the media pool, playback monitor, and timeline area showing, but it's easy to customize your layout by opening up new windows from the view menu and docking them in the top half of the interface. You can even combine those windows and move them to a second monitor if you want a dual screen experience. Importing media is fairly easy. It can be done by clicking import media in the top toolbar or by opening up the explorer window and when you do import media, Vegas Pro automatically separates your files by file type. You can also create custom bins and use smart bins. Basically, no matter how you organize your projects, 
you're good to go. Now, unlike most other professional level NLEs, instead of having a source monitor and a playback monitor, you only have a playback monitor. That means that instead of dragging your source clips into the source monitor, setting in and out points and dragging that segment into the timeline, all you need to do is drag that entire source clip directly into the timeline and then start cutting from there. To be honest, I'm still not sure how I feel about this method. On one hand, it can save a lot of time on simpler edits, such as my tutorials, but on the other hand, and it can cause some setbacks on more complicated edits where segments of a clip might be scattered throughout the timeline. And speaking of dragging clips into the timeline, here's something I thought was really cool. When Vegas first opens up, everything is set up for 30 frames per second. When you drag your first clip into the timeline, if it's anything other than 30 frames per second, it will ask you if you want to change the project settings to match the clip. Now, I know some of you are saying, so what? DaVinci Resolve does that, but that's not exactly true. While Resolve does ask you if you want to change the project settings to match the clip, it asks you when you import your clips into the project, not into the timeline. And if you're importing multiple clips that are at different frame rates, it can be sometimes difficult to know which clip DaVinci Resolve is trying to match. Asking that same question just a little bit later into the process removes all of that guesswork. It's the little things, right? Now the timeline itself was where I started to get a little lost, but not because it was too complicated. There are just a lot of tools that you can use, along with the basic stuff like cutting footage, setting markers, separating audio from video, and all that other good stuff. There are also other things like marking regions, a shuffle tool that will let you reorder clips in the timeline, and even the ability to delete and entire sections of a clip. Also, a few of the more commonly used controls are different. For example, instead of hitting C or B to make a cut in the footage, you hit S for split. Also, the space bar. In most NLEs, you hit the space bar to play the video, and then the space bar again to pause, and the playhead would stay where it was. In Vegas, you hit the space bar to play, but then when you hit it again, instead of pausing it, it stops playing and moves the playhead back to where you started playing from. If you want to have the playhead stop where you stop the video, you have to press enter, which for the life of me, I could not get used to. Luckily, the classic JKL scrubbing method it works the same as in Premiere and Resolve, so I just stuck with that for the duration of my test. Now, it would take me hours to go over every tool in the timeline, and I just don't have that kind of time. Still, there are a couple of tools I think are worth mentioning. First is the whole segment deleting thing. All you have to do is click and drag above the timeline to mark your segment, make sure that all of the clips you want affected are selected, and press delete. It's that easy. Now, obviously that's going to leave a big giant gap in your timeline. Now you could insert a different clip in there or you could drag the clips to the right of the gap over to the left to close up the gap, or you can use auto ripple to automatically have those gaps close when you delete something. One thing that I found impressive about auto ripple is that you can actually turn it on and off. I actually went through and cut the A-roll from one of my old tutorials and the combination of segment delete and auto ripple saved me a ton of time. The last timeline tool that I want to mention is auto crossfade, which is something that you might recognize if you're used to working in professional audio software. Let's say I have two clips and the cut from one to the other is just a little too jarring. Maybe there's too much silence between the words instead of adding a crossfade to the audio and a cross dissolve to the video, I can simply drag one clip towards the other and as soon as it overlaps, it will create those transitions automatically, but don't worry, if you don't want that, you can easily turn that feature off. All in all, I found that the basic editing tools in Vegas Pro 18 are just as advanced as the NLEs like DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. The only thing I can say that I wasn't a fan of was my experience scrubbing through the timeline. There are a few different ways to do it, but I found it to be a little less accurate than I'm used to, and there didn't seem to be a way to scrub frame by frame with audio, which is something that I find to be a vital tool in my own edits. I'd like to see that in a future update.
maybe? Unless I missed that. If I did, let me know in the comments and on your way down there, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Okay, let's move on to color grading. One thing I like about the color grading process in Vegas Pro 18 is that it can be done on individual clips or an entire video track and even on the source clip. Now, there is one fairly big caveat to that, but we'll touch on that in a bit. Color grading in Vegas somewhat resembles color grading in Resolve where everything is done in no Although they don't specifically call them nodes in Vegas, they call it an effects chain. Also, unlike Resolve, the nodes are all serial nodes, meaning you can't do parallel nodes or layer nodes or anything like that. Each new effect is tweaking the results that came from the effect before it. Now, I've worked like this before and it's not a huge deal, but it's been a while, so it took me about a day to come up with a workflow that I was comfortable with. Still, there are a lot of color grading tools in Vegas Pro like color curves, color balance, auto looks, LUT support, and even a full range of scopes to help you get an accurate grade. There's even a plugin called Color Grading that almost resembles the color wheels, primaries, bars, and curves that you would find in Resolve. But that does bring up that fairly big caveat that I mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, unless I miss something, again, leave a comment if I did, you can only use the color grading plugin at the individual clip level. I would love to see this available available for use on entire video tracks and even in source clips, but for now the workaround is to grade your first clip and then copy that grade to any other clips that need that grade. That's not a huge deal, but it could be a little more efficient if I could color grade an entire track at once. Again, it would take forever to go over all of the available color grading tools in Vegas, but a couple of them are definitely worth a mention and they both happen to be brand new to Vegas Pro 18. The first is a D noise tool, which while not as detailed as the noise removal tool in DaVinci Resolve, still does a pretty good job at getting rid of video noise. The second, which I find to be particularly interesting, is the new colorization plugin, which uses AI deep learning to color black and white or sepia tone footage. This is great for someone who works as an archivist and wants to bring new life to old footage. And I guess what's really interesting about this effect isn't necessarily the effect itself, but the AI deep learning that drives it. This is something that's new to Vegas Pro 18, I mentioned this before, and it powers a few other new effects as well. All in all, I found the color grading capabilities in Vegas Pro 18 to be more than adequate to get a good grade on my footage. Still, I definitely found myself missing a few things. I've already mentioned being able to use the color grading plugin at the track or media level. I would also like to see some different types of curves. Since I've started editing, I found that hue versus hue, hue versus versus saturation, hue versus luma, and even luma versus saturation curves found in both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro have all become integral parts of my color grading workflow, and the lack of those curves in Vegas Pro 18 definitely had me looking for alternative ways to do what I want. Still, I have to commend Magix for the work they've done in the color grading department and the fact that they have a UI preset built in that will optimize the layout for color grading. It just makes it that much better. Okay. Moving on to audio. Now, you would think that with Vegas Pro 18 starting out as a DAW that it would have all the tools you need to make a good sounding video and you'd be right. First of all, they have another layout preset for audio, so clicking on that in the view menu will basically rearrange the UI so it looks like a fully functional DAW with sliders, the automation, a whole host of other tools that you can use such as EQ, compression, noise gates, and even the ability to create buses. The buses are a huge benefit for me because I typically use two audio tracks for my dialogue and being able to route them both to a bus and edit them at the same time is a huge time saver. The one thing that did confuse me a little at first was the process of adding keyframes. In most NLEs and DAWs that I've used in the past, I could either click on the volume bar on the clip to set a keyframe or shift click or something like that. In Vegas, before you set a keyframe, you first have to create a volume envelope and then you can add keyframes to that. It's not a difficult process, but it was an added step that I wasn't expecting and I did have to do a Google search to figure it out. Audio plugins are used in the same chain format that color effects are used on video clips. Just select the effect you want in the chain, press add and press OK. Then you can tweak each effect that you added to the chain, add more effects, 
rearrange them, and delete them. Also, effects can be added to individual clips, entire tracks, or to buses, so you really have almost unlimited options when it comes to getting the right sound in your videos, and with the ability to send your audio to an external DAW, there's no reason that you can't get a great sounding video out of Vegas Pro. Okay, I know we've covered a lot, but we're almost done. I think. Maybe. Let's keep going. So far we've talked about color effects and audio effects, but what about graphic effects, titles, transitions, and all that other stuff? Well, Vegas Pro has that as well. Let's start with titles. I was actually very surprised at how much I liked the pre-made title templates in Vegas Pro 18. Most NLEs, DaVinci Resolve included, tend to have pre-made title templates that are just well, they're just bad. The text is always some weird block font with way too big of a drop shadow. And then there's these weird lines with ugly colors. I, I just don't like them. I like clean text with a little animation and that's exactly what Vegas Pro 18 has to offer. In fact, Vegas Pro 18 has added something like 25 new templates and I actually like most of them. So I don't know. Good job. Unfortunately, I can't really say the same for video transitions. Don't get me wrong, they have a lot of them, but other than the basic cross dissolves and dip to color transitions, I'm not really a fan. But that's not really a surprise. I don't usually like any fancy transitions. It doesn't matter what software it is. So that's more of a personal preference, I guess. Basically, if you want transitions, you've got a bunch to choose from. Same thing with graphic effects and video effects. They're there and there are a lot of them, but I typically don't use them very often. Although there are some film grain and film effects that I kind of liked, so that's good. Now, I need to be clear. When I say effects, we're not talking about After Effects or Fusion. Vegas Pro does not have compositing capabilities. However, Magix did just launch Vegas Post, which is a suite of post-production tools that include Vegas Effects, Magix's brand new compositing tool. I don't have my hands on the Vegas Post suite right now, but if you want me to do a review, let me know in the comments. Okay, let's Let's talk about rendering. There's some good news and some bad news here. First, let's look at the good. There are a lot of render presets in Vegas Pro 18 and every single one of them is fully customizable. So no matter what format your video needs to be in, they've got you covered. One thing that I found particularly interesting was the Magix Intermediate formatting, which is much like Apple's ProRes format. Unfortunately, I work on a PC and I wasn't able to play the rendered video on my computer, so I can't really speak to its quality, but it's nice to know that it's there. Now let's talk about the bad. First of all, I found the render times in Vegas Pro 18 to be less than ideal. Let's go with that. At first, it was taking me an average of 40 minutes to render a one minute long 1080p video. I was eventually able to export a one minute and 44 second video in just over 20 minutes with decent quality, but I still think that's way too long. I hope the future versions of Vegas improve on this because while a lot of the tools in Vegas Pro 18 are amazing, the long render times can be a huge workflow holdup. Okay, final verdict time. I found Vegas Pro to be a pretty good middle ground between something simple to use like Filmora and Movavi and something more professional like Premiere and Resolve. So if you're looking for something that gives a little more flexibility than Filmora, but you don't quite want the complexity of Resolve and you don't mind dealing with longer render times, I think you should absolutely check out a free trial of Vegas Pro 18. You can do that by clicking the link in the description. Now, if you're looking for something that's a little more simple, but still powerful and with a cheaper price tag, I would actually suggest checking out Movavi. To check out my views on that NLE, click here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that will help you become a better video editor, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.